In fact, what I'm going to do, Joe, is I'm going to show you how to do it on your ultimate or how to do it on your score master so you can make it work for both, okay? So if I start off with my ultimate. So bear in mind, I've got A4 cardstock. So I'm using my A4 ultimate, right? So this is the UK size one. So what I'm going to do first of all, and by the way, I've got a full ultimate show tomorrow, Joe, for those of you Me who want to Me and you, full ultimate. Yep. Full ultimate show. Oh, I can't club. wait. So watch this what I'm doing, right? I'm using the first score line and I'm scoring not all the way down, but I'm scoring it kind of part way, right? Because then what, watch what I'm going to do, Joe. In the middle of these two lines, I'm going to do my half fold line. So here's my half fold A4, right? So half fold A4 goes right in the middle, okay? Then watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this to here and we need to go up and then back down, right? And we're going to go up and then back down with this, right? And then all you do is you move this line. So this line is over here and you go back down on this side. Can you see that? So that's Got if it. you're not doing any of your measuring. And then all you do, Joe, is you take your knife and you go down here to that part and then also down here. And what you end up with is as long as the distance there is the same as the distance between that line and there, that will fold backwards, right? That folds up there. This comes down here and you end up with an absolutely perfect stepper card. All this and more explained on the Ultimate 101 tomorrow. So, right? not only has the cavalry arrived with tea, Tracy's here, she's also clutching chocolate bars as well. Oh, I've been she, strong. She is such She's, she's such got a tea influence. and chocolate. She's such, she's a, such a feeder. She's got a so flake much. and a Terry's chocolate orange. She loves so much for this, honestly. She always comes to my She's rescue, such a good one, isn't she? she? Well, it depends on if you're on a diet or not. <laughs> <laughs> right, so here's how we do that if we want to do it on your score master, right? So if you want to give this some official measurements, I'm going to come all the way down at an inch, right? And then I'm going to come down this side here at an inch as well. Now, your halfway point on this one, because that's remember what you've got to do, you've got to score it at halfway, is one little notch before the six. So watch one little notch before the six, but only in the middle part, right? Okay. Then decide how big you want your step to be. So if I want it to be an inch, watch this, I'll go up an inch, right? And then down an inch. And because my step's at an inch, I then need an inch onto this one. So this was one little notch before the six, so we go to one little notch before the seven, right? Let me flip that over and show you again. So we'll come up an inch and then down an inch. And because this was one little notch before the six, we go to one little notch before the seven, right? And then all you do, Joe, again, is you take that knife and you cut down the line here. Do you know what? It's one of them things, these. It's like anything. Anything's easy when you know how, isn't it? And then watch if I fold these up. This one folds up here and then these two step it in. So that is how you do a stepper card, either working from your ultimate or working from your, um, can you see, from your... Oh, what do you want to call it? Score master. Awesome. So that's the base card, right? So that is just how to do a nice step card. And tune in tomorrow, guys, for that full ultimate master class, and you're going to learn a lot more, right? Now, put that to one side. So there's the actual card we're going to decorate. What I'm going to do is just get a little bit. I've got a little bit of yellow card stock. And where have I put my embossing folder? Here it is, I've put it right under here. So I'm gonna take this jaw and let's just, let's just work up a little bit of that background, okay? So I'm gonna pop this into here. And then because it's a regular embossing folder, as in it's not a 3D embossing folder in any way, shape or form, what you do is you go in between your two outside cutting plates and then you send that through and that'll give you that lovely embossed detail. So if it was a 3D folder, you only use one of your clear plates and then your magnetic and frosted. Because it's a regular embossing folder, you're going to use both of them two together. So that gives me that beautiful, really deep embossed there, jaw. And then watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a little bit. I'm going to use some fryer brown here. Pick up that ink onto there. And I'm just taking the ink. So oh, if you notice, wow. I'm staying where I am. A uh, little bit of ink over on the corner, and with a little bit of fryer brown, I'm just going all the way around the outside. Now, 
your Chinese red would work lovely Wouldn't it? as well. Would be fabulous. Uh, or a little bit of Bordeaux would be nice. I almost picked up the Bordeaux. Uh, to be honest, there's a lot of those. As long as you're in the deeper shades. And remember, this is because I'm just distressing the cardstock. If you wanted to do the, um, what was I going to say? If you, if you wanted to do a little bit of uh, stamping and heat embossing jaw, your pigment inks are going to be perfect for this. Now, look at this. I'm just giving it a little bit of a rub over jaw now, using the kind of leftover little bits. Can you see with that? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that gilding wax nice. on the emboss background, right? So I'm going to use a little bit of the Renaissance this time, just nice. for a bit of a different feel. So always put it on with your finger, take most of it off, and then just give it a little bit of a rub over the top. So what we're doing is we're trying to add a little bit of sparkle without kind of getting it, without being a little bit too over the top. So I don't know how well the camera will be able to pick this up on the overhead, but we're just getting that kind of little bit of a subtle, um, like a subtle shine going over all those raised bits, Joe, with the gilding wax. Brilliant. Uh, loads of people uh, absolutely going. It's getting busier and busier and busier now, so I was coming to the second half of the show. I think a lot of people were, were maybe unsure about it because I think, and I can yeah. definitely see, Sarah, that it's very different. Cheers. You know, it's, it, maybe uh, you love uh, florals, maybe you go for more traditional stylings when it comes to your crafting, but I think it doesn't take very long, does it, to see how you're going to be able to create things that are not only beautiful, that have loads of great symbolism behind them, and also are so craftable and so giftable as well, Sarah. I think you're going to be easily able to think of a load of different people that you're going to be able to give these to, and the colourways, again, are absolutely exquisite. I've just yep. heard something, and I'm going to have to just ask Georgina, George Squared, if, if that's true. You heard that, Sarah? I, I've heard you. Not Did good way, I've got a pair of scissors in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, half the stock has gone of the collection. This isn't just a little, you know, just a, few, uh, you know, a couple of hundred of these that we have. This is our Crafters TV launch stock. We ring fence a huge amount of stock for you, our Crafters TV customers, uh, because you are so dear to us. Half that stock has already gone. That's people that have checked out their baskets, and there are lots of you in the ordering process at the moment. I know you're not going to regret going for this, along with all the extra paper pads that so many of you have gone for as well. Extremely busy. I'm so pleased, sir. I can't wait to see what people start making with this. Oh, it's amazing. And do you know what? It's going to be another one of those that's a little bit like, you know when they did the peacock? And everyone's like, oh, it's very different to anything yeah. we've done before. And then becomes one of our absolute top sellers anywhere. I mean, look at that paper, the paper there. And that's just a little bit of yellow cardstock. Because I've used the, um, the scissors to it, distress around the edge, doesn't that give a wonderful background? Now, what I've done, Joe, is then I've also used a couple of little bits, can you see, of just the, like, the leftover pieces. Nice. This is where you're going to do, I don't know whether to use the, the A side or the B side. Um, it's a double A side. Double A side, there we go. So I'm going to go into there like that. Now, this is, I've obviously made this, Joe, with the matte black cardstock. However, if you wanted to do this Centura Pearl, is absolutely brilliant for these base cards. And you know what? That Centura Pearl card pack that we had, um, you know, that has all the matching colours, that would be absolutely amazing to go with this. It would. Season. Lots of you going for the Centura Pearl, lots of you going for the gilding waxes as well. Already suggestions coming in for the craft along for this, uh, Ooh, Sarah. Yeah, I'd love to know, to know if, you'd like, want to do. if you'd like to join us for the craft along, that'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Yes. Uh, if you guys came on, not scheduled at the moment, but do you know what? Drop it'll us be, a... It'll be, it'll be, it will be beginning of June time. Absolutely. So drop us an email, crafters TV guests at crafterscompanion.com crafters tv guests at crafterscompanion.com awesome guest awesome singular not guest plural there singular. you are dot co dot uk i mean i was wow. close enough come on close but no cigar uh talking of cigars uh michelle says i'm planning to use this collection to make a cigar box for Ooh. my daughter whom was born in okinawa and loves all things Oriental. I'm hearing about this Okinawa. I know, again. it was somewhere I wasn't even aware of until a couple of years me ago. Um, it's some islands me, me in the... It's somewhere I wasn't aware of until a couple of hours ago, Joe. <laughs> it's a collection of islands in the very, very south of Japan. Uh, and the people there are, as I said, the longest lived people in the world because of their diet uh, of lots of fish and tofu and all these other wonderful things they eat, apparently. Uh, 
Right, here we go. So, all I'm doing, Joe, is I'm just stamping this lovely um, frame in the background, right? So this, this is that lovely peony frame. And like you said, this does it. Pair this up with the, um, the oriental background papers. Fabulous. Pair it up Brilliant. with your florals and it'll just make a lovely kind of floral background. Now, Absolutely. That's the frame. But then watch what you can do is you can just colour them. Um, let's have a look. I can go and find. No, it's not that way. It's not that way. There it is. Is it that way? Or is it this way? That's I it. I think that's it. There we go. It would be the one you tried last, wouldn't it? Of course it, it? is. Always the way. Always is. So I'm just going to die cut this out. Now, I won't do all of the colouring, but I will die cut it out to give you a little bit of a feel for how it's going to look, Joe. Jo, it's nice to have something a little bit different. Now, there's that. Can I just show you the one that I've done all the colouring in for? Because you, you go back and watch our colouring happy, colour me happy show on Friday was absolutely fabulous. If you want tips on like how to do brilliant colouring with like your um, oh what's the word I'm looking for? We did lovely colouring with your colour blend pencils. Nice, yes. yes. Right. So watch this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a couple of little big globules of glue, and then I'm just going to pop a couple of these globules of glue behind here as well. So can you see, that's just going to hold that in place on there. And then because that's going to come through, that will hold it on place on there. Now, if you want to, Joe, as well, what you can do is, this has also got some extra little stamps and then extra dies to go with it. So nice. if you wanted to do an extra few bits, okay, you can do extra die cuts to add extra little pieces onto them. Now what they will do is they will layer up on top if you want. So you can either layer them up on top or I'm going to layer up a couple down the bottom here. Um. How about putting a little bit of spray and sparkle on the top of those little bits that you've put on top there as well? Oh, nice. <sighs> nice. Or Would if you've got, you know, any sort of classy. varnishes or glossy accents or those sort of things, you're going to love using those. I love how you put one there and two down there, Sarah. Two down the bottom. Well, it's just I like that. different, isn't it? Yeah, it is different. Now, watch how these toppers work, right? You take one of the toppers, Joe. You can either peel it off and use it on its own. Can you see? And it's got, like, the same on the back as well. Or yes. if you want a multi-layer one, all we're going to do is Sarah Scissorhands is going to go for it around the outside, uh, cut around the outside here, Joe, and you can end up with like a double layer one if you want. Nice. So it's just up to you whether you want the double layer one or maybe you want to take them apart and use them as two layers, but they've already got all of the... Um, Oh, they've already got all the foam pads on if you wanted to do them a little bit 3D. So there we go. You are beautiful inside and out. And actually, I'm going to go with a nice big globule of glue on the bottom there, Joe. Pop that down there. And that's how you do uh, one of those um, shaped stepper cards, but with those beautiful peonies and that lovely background piece in there as well. I think it is stunning. And again, Sarah, it doesn't necessarily scream oriental. Nope. See, whereas, whereas maybe if you'd have put like a pagoda stamp on there or something, or the topper from the pagoda, or maybe one of the lanterns. So what I'm saying is, I mean, it really can be as sort of oriental or a sort of pretty floral as you want it to be, which I think is absolutely incredible. And a really lovely card concept.